So let's talk about segment. So either you're using segment already for quite some time or you just um, started out. So you just created an account and so you are sitting in front of these uh, empty tool and you are asking yourself, okay, how can I basically get some data in there? Or you maybe are in a phase um, that you are considering segment because you heard some things about them and you think about mm, maybe it's a good solution. The ones who already introduced them, uh, first of all, congratulations. You definitely selected a very solid tool uh, for the ones who are considering it. Um, definitely worth a consideration. Um, and so I'm working with segment for quite some time cannot even recount the number of years, but really quite some time. And I already started out when they brought out their first product, which was an open source JavaScript library. And so this JavaScript was basically a big help for me at that point of time, because this was already the time when we started out to send similar data to different kind of platforms. So on the one hand to analytics platforms, on the other hand to um, marketing platforms. And so uh, in that day, so because like Google Tag Manager was not around there, we just implemented plenty of scripts on a website. And um, of course, like load was a problem, but the major problem was like you define each event, I don't know, 10 times. And this is not really fun. And so um, Segment solved that. And this is what Segment still does. <laughs> What we want to do now is like we want to have a look into what makes Segment special, what are the different parts of the product, uh, for which kind of use cases you can use this different part of the product. We start with a high level. And so let's look into Segment. Um, so what is Segment? I mean, the, the big problem always like to explain Segment to other people. So at least like this was also like uh, a problem that uh, I had. Let's maybe list a little bit out what it definitely is. So one thing I already said is like, it's a centralized way to collect data. So I usually call a segment a data collection layer. And I don't think that segment itself would call themselves a data collection layer, but for me it's like this. So it's like, so segment is really like this, the central part somewhere. Okay, so segment sits here. Uh, let's make it green so it's obvious it's segment. Awesome. So segment sits here and then um, you have different kind of places where some data can come from. And so let's define some. So it could be from your website. Obvious one, there's where we all started. Um, it could be from your backend. Um, or it could be from your CRM because, I mean, your CRM has also activities where things are happening with your customers. It can come from your uh, customer service tools. So there are plenty of places um, where some event data can happen. And so segment can just sit in the middle and basically receive this kind of data. But wherever you send the data, you send it in a way that segment understands. And the good thing is like, once you understand how to do this, you can basically implement it for all the different kind of places. And, um, and also later we come into this so that they also have different kind of SDKs that makes it a lot easier. But in the end it's like, so you have a standard set uh, how you send data into segment and you can apply it in whatever place you have where you send data, uh, where you collect uh, event data and then just send it into segment. And then what segment does is like, it then takes this kind of data and it does different things with it. So most of the data is passed on quickly to a different place. So it's basically really like a proxy. So this could be then that like ad platforms. For example, uh, send all the data to Google Ads. You can send all the data to Facebook, to whatever. So plenty of advertisement platforms are supported. And so this is quite nice. I mean, you, you collect something on the website, but you might also collect something on the back end where, for example, you um, have a finished or like a, a subscription has been created successfully. And so in that case, uh, you can also send this into Segment and then Segment can check which kind of advertisement platform is capable of receiving uh, this back end event because like back end event always requires that the advertisement platform has some kind of API that you can send the data to because it doesn't happen in the front end. 
And so then it will send this too there. And so you don't really have to take care of sending this yourself to this advertisement platform. So you can just send it into Segment and Segment pass it on. And um, yeah, the use case analytics platforms. And another thing that I use a lot, you could put everything that you get, um, you basically put into a database. So um, Segment is the easiest way to get raw event data into a database. So if you already have some kind of database, so let's say you have a cloud warehouse uh, or database, like, uh, I don't know, BigQuery, uh, Snowflake, Redshift, or just a Postgres. Um, so you can take all the data that's collected here and you can just pipe it into this kind of database. And then um, you can build some reporting directly on this database. And you have full control because like, you get the event data how it happens. So you don't get this aggregated or changed or filtered or transformed stuff that you get when you, for example, send the data to Google Analytics. So this is what Segment does at the core. So it's, it's really like it's this kind of, let's say, so I call it data collection layer because like, um, so I can send data from everywhere and then Segment is passing it on to everywhere. So this is like, for me, in, in most of the setups, it's this essential part because um, I always want to have a central part where I send my event data to. So I don't want to send it to 10 different places because this is basically the introduction for insanity. So I want to have one place where I send it to and from there I can decide where I want to send it um, to different kind of places. So then Segment has some other features as well. One thing they have, and it looks a little bit, let's say, like a, just a small extension or so, but it's a pretty powerful feature they have. And so they have something which they call functions. And so the functions, functions can sit on both ends here. What is a function? A function is basically the possibility for you to, um, on the one hand, integrate data that doesn't have, a, let's say, a standard integration that Segment has built for you. So I, for example, use it a lot in this case. So CRM data doesn't come naturally into Segment. So CRMs are capable of sending webhooks. So webhook is basically like someone, for example, creates a new deal and then the CRM system is basically sending out a request to an endpoint that you have defined. Hey, actually someone created a deal. And they send basically their data format to this kind of endpoint. And so, of course, Segment doesn't understand this kind of data format that the CRM is sending. So you need something that translates the data from a CRM um, into something that Segment understands. And so this is uh, where functions come into place. And so you can write or have someone from the development team write a function that basically receives this kind of data and then transfers it into a proper segment um, event. And so you can even do plen multiple events. So sometimes, for example, for some uh, activities that we receive from a CRM system, uh, we, for example, trigger an event and also identify this kind of user already. So we can do this in the function as well. So functions give you a lot of power to receive data from different kinds of places and enhance, transform, and map them to get into segment. And then once they are segment, they are just behave like typical segment things. So this is super great, but sometimes you have use cases where um, maybe segment doesn't have something for that. And so here, for example, like the uh, the second type of, of functions is basically like then the destination kind of function. So it might be that you have some kind of system um, that you use, maybe you use something internally, um, and you also want to receive the segment data. And so then you can write this kind of function that basically is sitting on top of segment, receive, like seeing all the events coming in, and then picking the events and sending them off to a different place, or maybe filtering out. So um, this is, for example, something interesting as well. Maybe you don't want to send all the data to a specific kind of ad platform. You just want to send specific kind of data to an advertisement platform. This is something you can also do with functions because like, you can take the data, filter it out, pass it on. Definitely, of course, it requires uh, development um, skills. You need someone to do this, but it's not super hard. For someone who can do JavaScript, it's, it's pretty easy to, to figure out, okay, how, how do you set this up uh, in Segment? So these are the functions. So what else does Segment have? So Segment has something, and so this is quite interesting because when you look up there, 
they call themselves the leading customer data platform. And so this is quite interesting because like um, customer data platform, I think is the most bloated term out there. I mean, of course, what segment does, and this is why they call themselves like this. Yeah, you collect a lot of customer data. You collect customer data from here, from here, from here, from here. And you pass it all here. So segment has all the customer data. And so there are people out there who call segment more customer data infrastructure, which I think is a much better term um, for that because like segment really provides the infrastructure that you get all the data because in the, let's say, the old sense of customer data platform, you usually have these kind of tools here that do something with the data also in this kind of platform. So a full-blown customer data platform like, I don't know, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So they have all the all the functions integrated. So um, if you want to run an email sequence, you can do everything in this kind of tool. So in Segment, you can just pass on specific kind of data to a email tool and then run the email service there. So what, what Segment does is like, and this is like the product, which why they refer themselves as, as CDP. And this product is called Personas. And so what, what Personas does is like it helps you with different kind of things also like on the, on the let's say, the very, very foundational level of customer data. So on the one hand, it helps you to, um, to stitch identities. And customer data has a lot of to do with stitching identities because someone does something on your website with an email X. Someone signs up to your uh, platform potentially maybe with a different email and has a specific user ID. In your CRM system, you maybe have both entries and you need a way to merge them. And so on. So I, you can believe me if you start out with customer data, identity stitching is at some point definitely a topic that you will cover. And so Segment has things to help you there. So they have different kind of functions, different kind of ways, how you can define how you want to merge, um, how you want to merge users, what are the leading identifiers that you want to use, and you can set up different kind of rule sets, so how, maybe, in which case you want to use which kind of identifier. What they do is like, you can create a centralized place to create segmentation. So of course it's segments, so you can create segmentation. Uh, so what does it mean? It means like you collect all the different kind of activities around here. So someone is um, is looking at a, let's say a pricing page on your website. And so you also, they created an account at some point of time in the past, so you know this as well. And so maybe you also know in the back end that they already had a free trial two years ago. And so in the CIM system, you can see that, oh, they already got someone from, uh, your sales team reached out to them and they at least clicked on the email and checked the white paper that you sent to them. So these are all the different kind of things that you already collected about this kind of user. And then what you can do in Personas is really like you can create a segmentation, can say, actually, I want to see all the users that have at least one time saw the pricing page and open this white paper that the CRM team is always sending out. And so, and this is a specific group of people. And this specific group of people I want to send out to my email marketing tool and also to my uh, to Google Ads because I want to run on Google Ads, I want to run some um, retargeting campaign and on the other one I want to send an email sequence. And the good thing is like when you do it in, in segment, you have a central place where you create the segmentation because in the other case you would create the segmentation in your email tool and then you would create the segmentation again in Google Ads to some degree. And so... This is something where Personas helps. It's super helpful if when you have, let's say, different, really different kind of marketing tools that you use um, where you basically run marketing activities on the same customer data. So Personas centralize this. Let's quickly look on a second add-on as well, um, which is for tracking quite an interesting one. So once you have a tracking plan ready, uh, you can either do it directly. So if you use segment protocols, it's also an add-on, so you have to buy it. Um, so, But if you have bought it, so you can go in there and you can create your tracking plan directly in segment. So with all the things that we just discussed. So like the events and the properties and so on. And what you can then do is basically like you you can use this, uh, you use this as a monitoring system. So you create the tracking plan, you say, so you can say, okay, it's a draft one, and then you can say, okay, it's in production actually. And so then once it's in production, so Segment checks all the events that come into Segment against this tracking plan. And then it points out things that um, 
does not validate against the schema that you have created. So that's one thing that you can do with protocols. So it gives you a good monitoring system to see um, if the data is flowing in the right shape. All right, so this is how Segment works. Uh, I hope it gives you kind of an idea uh, what it is. 